So yesterday we received some massive hotfix changes. These changes all affected heroes Doomfist, Orisa, Ramatra, Sojourn, Tracer, Ana, and Kiriko. We'll be going over those changes here in a bit, but one hero that was missing from this list that everyone expected was Roadhog. Aaron Keller, the game director of Overwatch 2 earlier this week, tweeted that Roadhog would be receiving some changes in a hotfix this week, along with all of the other heroes. Now, as you can assume, he didn't actually get these changes, and the reason why I think he didn't get them is because they want to try to bring up other heroes first to see how they fit into the meta, and then at that point, we're going to be seeing some changes to Roadhog. In a blog post, they stated that Orisa and Ramacha had received some adjustments in order to give them more competitive options to stand up to Roadhog. So even they recognize that Roadhog is the best tank in the game right now and that he really does need some better counter options. They say it's from technical issues, but again, I just really think that it's from the fact that they want to see how these other heroes match up in the meta first and then decide how exactly they want to adjust Roadhog. It goes on by saying originally we planned to adjust Roadhog in this patch, but we could not adjust him due to a technical issue with our hotfix today, which for me is just kind of code to saying that we don't actually want to nerf him that hard yet. We just want to wait to see what happens with these other heroes that we've buffed to maybe give you guys a better chance. It's also possible that they did buff Orisa and Ramatra in order to give us some sort of chance against Roadhog finally, but then at that point when Roadhog gets nerfed, what are we left with? Are we left with an Orisa and Ramatra that may be too strong? I don't know, but I do know Know that he is going to be receiving a nerf sometime in January and he's going to be losing his one shot ability. Here's what Alec Dawson, who is the lead hero designer, had to say about it. Sometime in mid January, there is going to be a patch that does change Roadhog's ability to one shot. Um, and at that time, you know, he is going to get pretty nerfed. I, I think over time, what we want to do with Roadhog is look at his kit a bit more closely, so something like a soft rework and see how he fits in a bit more in the 5v5 environment and what that means for him as a so as he said roadhog is in fact going to be losing his one shot capability and they want to kind of adjust him more to fit into the 5v5 tank role instead of this 6v6 tank that we have right now he just really seems a little bit too strong for the meta that we have and yes he does have counters like anna but with kiriko in the mix she completely just full negs anna so then at that point is anna even a counter and then it just gets really complicated even though roadhog didn't get his change there still was plenty of other changes that happened so let's go ahead and go over them doomfist was also kind of an issue he was just really strong really overwhelming and for support players he was kind of a menace so changes that he received his rocket punch cooldown reverted back to the four seconds it was originally but it did retain all of the other buffs that it has for his power blocks minimum damage mitigation requirement to empower his rocket punch increased from 80 to 100. now originally before his buff it was at 90 so it's really technically just gone down by 10. I think this change was made because of all the other changes made to his rocket punch in a previous patch to where now it actually does stun you without being empowered. Prior to that, it didn't have this, so getting his empowerment was really kind of important in order to make him good. And now he doesn't actually need that. Having it is just a bonus. And for his passive, the temporary health gain per target has been reduced from 40 to 35. So just a slight change. He does get a little bit less health now. But the max health that he can gain is still back where it was when it got buffed. Overall, Doomfist is not in the ground. He's still way better than what he was previously. And I'm hoping these changes will balance him out a lot more. Someone that nobody expected on this list was actually Orisa. Orisa got a buff where her Terra Surge, which is her ultimate, now pierces through barriers on the impact. So you can no longer use Ryan Shield, Sigma Shield, or even Symmetra's ultimate to block off Orisa. Honestly, I don't really think this is that big of a change because not many people are really playing shield tanks like that outside of Sigma. I'm guessing the reason why they made this change is because Orisa is seeing play to try to counter the Roadhog. So I guess maybe they figure since that's going to be the case, people are going to try to run shield tanks more often. And this would kind of make her a little bit more deadly versus another big change that they made was changing the fall off damage on her primary from 15 to 25 meters. So she now gained an extra 10 meters in primary damage effectiveness. This is good because with the javelin, when, when the javelin pushes you away, sometimes it would push them out of the damage range. And now it really just kind of depends on where you javelin them to. For Ramatra, he received some massive buffs. His movement speed has been increased by 20% when he's in his nemesis form. So he doesn't actually slow down. He doesn't move like a brick anymore. And his armor bonus increased from 150 to 225. 
So that means in his nemesis mode, not only is he moving 20% faster, he now also goes from instead of having the 600 health in nemesis mode, he has 675 health. This is definitely going to increase his sustainability, especially while in his ultimate, he's going to be pretty menacing. And just being able to go into nemesis mode and, and rush on enemies is going to be really powerful for him. He also reduced the cooldown on his beer in his Omnic mode from 15 to 13 seconds. So still quite a long cooldown, but it is really effective. So next is one that a lot of people also wanted to see, Sojourn. Her primary damage spread was increased by 28%. And as playing Sojourn pretty much all day yesterday, you can definitely tell that this change is noticeable. I will say that, that she is not unplayable, so anyone who's looking for that, I'm sorry. Her Disruptor Shot also received a change, making it so where it no longer slows enemy movement down. In my mind, they were probably juggling between either reducing the damage on it or removing the movement speed. Personally, I would rather them get rid of the movement speed, and that's simply because a lot of people don't really know that they're even in it sometimes. So it's still going to be doing quite a bit of damage, even when people may not notice, or even if they just sometimes they just can't move. And the cooldown on her power slide has been increased from 6 to 7 seconds. I think this is probably just to fall more in line with Hanzo, who also has kind of like a, a sudden movement. Even though Sojourns is infinitely better, but it does kind of balance it out, make it more fair with other movement capabilities. Tracer did receive a slight nerf. I'm also going to guess they fixed the bug with her pulse bomb, but her damage has now been reduced from 6 to 5.5. Honestly, I didn't imagine that they would do half damage. This change takes about 20 damage off of her clip. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, I do think that maybe the one damage was a little bit too much. So possibly they could have gone back to the five damage, but then maybe tighten the spread or give her a larger mag, something along those lines. Either way, I'm just glad that she's still viable. Ana actually received some pretty nice changes on her rifle where her damage and healing has been increased from 70 to 75. This actually means that she two shots Tracer now, but in my opinion, if she two shots a Tracer, then she kind of deserves it. In the effect of her anti-grenade, the duration has been increased from three to four seconds. So now you're going to stay anti a little bit longer and she could probably deal out more damage to you or even heal her teammates a lot better now. And lastly, with Kiriko, her Suzu actually got a nerf, a slight nerf. It is reduced from one second to 0.85 seconds. For me, this is a change that I kind of saw coming is talking to a few of my mutuals and I really just think that her Suzu maybe just lasted a little bit too long, which is actually kind of ironic because, you know, during playtesting yesterday, it actually did affect me once, in my opinion. I, it's hard to really tell with 0.15 seconds, but it felt like it was. So what do you guys think of these balance changes? Overall, if I would rate it out of 10, I'd give it a good, you know, probably 8 out of 10. And that's simply just because Roadhog wasn't on it. I think the changes are all pretty fair. I think they're all pretty warranted. You know, as someone who plays Sojourn, I think the changes were necessary for her. What I'm really excited for is these upcoming Roadhog nerfs. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please leave a like on it. And if you guys want to see more Overwatch content, smash that sub button and I'll see you guys in the next video.